Hi everyone. I'd like to show you how to eliminate layer two loops. When network services become unavailable, the indicator flashes regularly and there is a pause during login. Layer two loops may occur on the network. We can use the following methods to determine layer two loops. Method one, check the interface traffic to detect broadcast storms. Run the display interface brief include up command on the device. Check the incoming and outgoing traffic on the interfaces in up state. When the input usage and output usage on one or more interfaces are unexpectedly large, a loop occurs on the interface. When the input or output usage of an interface is very large, a loop occurs on the network connected to the interface. This method can be used to check only the current traffic. We need to compare the current traffic volume with the normal service traffic volume. If the current traffic volume is much larger than the normal service traffic volume, layer two loops may occur. If the current traffic volume is slightly larger than the normal service traffic volume or broadcast suppression is configured, you need to use other methods to determine whether layer two loops occur. Let's show how to use method one. Enter the password for logging in to the device and run the display interface brief include up command. The command output shows the traffic on the interfaces is in up state. The input and output usage of GE005 GE009 and GE0014 reaches 100%, indicating that loops occur on the three interfaces. Normally, the usage cannot reach this value. Let's move to method two. Method two, check whether MAC address flapping occurs continuously. Before checking MAP address flapping, check whether MAC address flapping prevention is configured. If MAC address flapping prevention is configured, disable this function or use other methods to determine whether layer two loops occur. Two methods can be used to check MAC address flapping. One, run the display trap buffer command to check the alarm about MAC address flapping. If there are many alarms, search for the alarm based on the alarm OID. The alarm OID is 1.3.6.1.4.1.2011.5.25.160.3.7 2. Run the MAC address flapping detection command to enable global MAC address flapping detection and run the display MAC address flapping record command to check the MAC address flapping record. Check the interface where MAC address flapping occurs to determine the position and causes of a loop. We can only determine layer two loops when MAC address flapping occurs continuously. If there are few MAC address flapping records, this is normal. Let's show how to use method two. Run the display trap buffer command to check the MAC address flapping record. Log into the device and run the display trap buffer command on the device. There are many alarms on the device. Find the alarm with the OID of 1.3.6.1.4.1.2011.5.25.160.3.7. This alarm is the alarm about MAC address flapping. According to the alarm, we can find that MAC address flapping occurs on GE005, GE009, and GE0014. That is, loops occur on GE005, GE009, and GE0014. Let's show how to check the MAC address flapping record. Enter the system view. Run the MAC address flapping detection command to enable global MAC address flapping detection. 
and run the display MAC address flapping record command to check the MAC address flapping record. According to the command output, MAC address flapping occurs on GE005, GE009, and GE0014. The MAC address flapping count is 65,535, which is the maximum value. This indicates that loops occur on GE005, GE009, and GE0014. Let's see method 3. Method 3. Configure loopback detection to detect loops. Run the loopback detect enable command to enable loopback detection on all interfaces. Run the loopback detect packet VLAN, VLAN ID command to enable loopback detection in a specific VLAN, and run the loopback detection action, action type command to configure an action taken on an interface where a loop is detected. Please note that the loopback detect packet VLAN, VLAN ID, and loopback detect action, action type commands need to be configured on the interfaces where loops need to be detected. Now run the display loopback detect command to check loopback detection information. Check the interface status to determine the position and causes of a loop. Loopback detection requires that the device should send a large number of detection packets to detect loops, which occupies system resources. Therefore, disable loopback detection if loops do not need to be detected. Let's show how to use method 3. Enter the password for logging into the device. Enter the system view and run the loopback detect enable command to enable loopback detection on all interfaces. Configure loopback detection in a specified VLAN and configure an action taken on an interface where a loop is detected. Configure an action on all interfaces if we do not know the interfaces where loops occur. Enter the view of GE005, run the loopback detect packet VLAN1 command to configure loopback detection in VLAN1, and run the loopback detect action trap command to configure the trap action. Perform the same configurations on GE009 and GE0014. After the configuration is complete, run the display loopback detect command to check the interface status. Alarms are reported when external loops are detected on GE005, GE009, and GE0014. The preceding slides describe how to determine layer 2 loops. Next, let's show how to eliminate layer 2 loops. When there are layer 2 loops, broadcast storms seriously affect services, and services need to be restored quickly. So you need to use the loop prevention method. Step 1. Determine the layer 2 network topology. The complete topology information is the prerequisite for resolving loop problems. Step 2. Use the methods that affect services to the minimum degree. 1. Remove the interface from the VLAN where a loop occurs. 2. Shut down the interface where a loop occurs. 3. Remove the network cable or fiber where a loop occurs. Step 3. Check whether loops are eliminated and services are restored. If not, repeat the preceding operations. Loops may occur on multiple interfaces. Manual loop prevention can resolve loop problems, but the original network topology may be changed and original functions such as link backup and load balancing may be affected. You can perform layer 2 network optimization. Scenario 1. 
Deploy a loop prevention protocol. If loops are caused by physical loops and no loop prevention protocol is configured, deploy a common loop prevention protocol such as STP based on the network plan. Scenario 2. Improve the quality and reliability of the physical link. When the physical link is unreliable, packets of a loop prevention protocol are congested and lost. As a result, a temporary loop occurs. In this case, check the physical link and replace the network cable or fiber. If protocol packets are discarded due to insufficient bandwidth, increase the bandwidth or use the aggregated link to improve the link reliability. Finally, let's see typical scenarios of loops. Scenario 1. Loops occur between two or more interfaces of a device. Scenario 2. A loop occurs on the downstream device. A loop occurs on the network connected to the interface. As a result, a loop also occurs on the local device. Scenario 3. A self-loop occurs. Scenario 4. A loop prevention protocol has been configured on the device. Due to the protocol packet forwarding exception, the protocol does not take effect and a loop occurs. To obtain more information about common configurations and features of Huawei switches, you can refer to the All About Switches threads on Huawei's Enterprise Support Community site. You can find these threads by entering the following in Google's search field, open quote, all about switches, close quote, site, colon, Huawei.com. Then click any of the links displayed to enter Huawei's Enterprise Support Community. All About Switches threads describe typical configurations and address frequently asked questions about Huawei switches. For more details about features, please visit the community homepage. That's all for today's lesson. Thank you.